Yes, we finally have a date for the race-based referendum, October 14, two weeks after the AFL and NRL Grand Finals, where the Australian public will be hit with an avalanche of pro-yes messaging. Brace yourself because the Yes camp has an enormous war chest, reportedly up to $100 million, to spend in a relatively short period of time. Australia has never seen anything like this. We're going to be bombarded with political propaganda like never before, and it'll all be political propaganda designed to guilt and bamboozle you into backing constitutional change. This is not an even playing field. The Yes camp has all the advantages. It's not just the enormous funding they have, thanks largely to big corporates like the big four banks, BHB, Rio Tinto, West Farmers and Qantas, to name just a few. But the Yes camp also enjoys the support of unions, cultural bodies and leading sporting organisations, something the Prime Minister was eager to trumpet today. Faith groups and sporting codes and local councils and businesses and unions have embraced it. An army of volunteers from every part of this great nation are throwing all of their energy behind it. And Anthony Albanese was certainly turning up the hyperbole today, pushing the most simplistic argue, I'd argue, well, most vacuous arguments for The Voice, uh, arguments that do not stand up to any sort of scrutiny. And, of course, he keeps pushing the notion that the Uluru Statement is a magnanimous one-page document full of generosity and fluffy statements. It's nothing of the sort. It's a militant statement written by activists for activists. The PM today also pushed the incredibly misleading notion that this referendum was just about giving Indigenous people equal opportunity. And if you care about what's best for Indigenous people, then you'd back racial privilege being enshrined into the Constitution. What Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people want for their children is what you want for yours. Staying healthy, doing well at school, finding a job they love, being safe and leading fulfilling lives. That's what they are asking you to say yes to at this referendum. The same opportunity for their children to make a good life for themselves. This referendum has nothing to do with any of that. To suggest that a new bloated bureaucracy led by the activist class will solve the enormous issues facing Indigenous Australians is beyond simplistic. That was a point Senator Jacinta Nampajimpa Price was eager to make today. Well, firstly, by voting no to dividing our country along the lines of race and relegating Indigenous Australians to an unknown, uh, detailless, risky and permanent entity. Uh, this is not how you solve problems for Indigenous Australians. The Prime Minister has failed to actually provide any evidence whatsoever that demonstrates how it will improve the lives of Indigenous Australians. What we need to do is get our hands dirty and do what actually has not been done. A, a, a bloated bureaucracy has been done time and time again. Uh, to suggest to put it in our constitution makes it magically effective is wrong. What we haven't done is we haven't uh, looked into where the billions of dollars are being spent year in, year out to determine how they can be better spent, to determine who has uh, been misspending the money and apply real accountability. Accountability would be a fine thing. Why would we want to give more money and more power to an industry that is failing Indigenous people? Why would we want to have more of what hasn't worked and have it entrenched in the Constitution so it can't be changed? As Warren Mundine pointed out today, we are spending more than $30 billion a year to close the gap. Why are the outcomes so deplorable? They have been spending $33 billion annually on Aboriginal affairs. I went and did some of the sums over the last 50 years of the money spent, and it's nearly a trillion dollars. The question has got to be asked, what have you done with that money? I mentioned earlier that the Yes Camp not only has a massive war chest, but also the support of sporting bodies, unions and big corporates. I left out one important group. The Yes Camp also has the backing of the bulk of the media.
And today, as Senator Price and Warren Mundine spoke to the media, they were asked whether it worried them that some on their side might be racist. Funnily enough, they didn't pose that question to Albo or the Yes advocates who are pushing a race-based measure, which by definition is racial in granting privileges to people based purely on their ethnicity. No, the Yes side is not asked about the virulently racist comments pushed by their supporters, sometimes by their high-profile advocates. It's the No side that is smeared with that suggestion. Well, today, Warren Mundine was in no mood to cop that nonsense. This thing is about division and dividing this country and the racial abuse that we've been hearing over the last few months. You know, everyone knows the pressure that was put on me to send me almost to suicidal positions. And this is what this is what this Prime Minister has done. This Prime Minister from day one had attacked people who had a different opinion to him, called them names, and that opened up the floor for the whole division to start with all the horrible racial abuse with all the horrible uh, uh, bigotry that's been going on out there, and it's all elbow. I'll be speaking to a very fired-up Warren Mundine later in the program. As I've been saying for some weeks now, the No Camp cannot afford to become complacent. They are facing a monumental task where the other side has all the advantages, except one, principle. This referendum should be rejected on principle. The detail, or lack thereof, is almost immaterial. No country, no sane country, should seek to have racial division in its constitution, where people are afforded certain additional rights based purely on their racial makeup. That is a backward step, a toxic, divisive, and damaging step. And this referendum must be final. The Anthony Albanese government cannot legislate a voice if the Australian people reject it. And that message must also sink in for the coalition who have flirted with a legislated voice. What we need is accountability and real change in how our money is spent in improving outcomes for Indigenous Australians. We need to eliminate some of the ineffective bureaucracies, not create a massive new one.